This video was brought to you by Stoenberg, Abed Root Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Beal. What's up? We are now sitting in a Skoda Enyaq Coupe RS or is it VRS? I'm not sure. I think it's, yeah, let me see. Do I need more light here? Is that too much? Wait, how about if I do this? Yeah, I think that's better. So you can see some of the interior here. All right, can you see it? Well, this one isn't a bit in the way. You put it in the back so it doesn't get in the way. There, I think that's better. Yes, so, you guys saw it, the auto stair works great. I have to say, it does a very good job staying in the lane, it doesn't do any weird shit. And also you can probably hear that uh, this car is fairly quiet despite having 21 inch wheels. Huh? Can you believe that? What else is it? Mm, it's also fairly quiet, I mean it's not fairly, fairly uh, comfortable. Uh, this time I do a little twist here because uh, you see here, I have, well, I mean, actually it's, it's over here for you guys, but I put car scanner here. This app is called car scanner and it shows you lots of info. So it might be useful for you to see what's going on rather than just me talking about the car. And also I might from time to time show you guys some stuff and then it would be useful to see what's going on. For example, right now it's uh, 16 degrees Celsius outside and we want to have it 22 degrees inside the car. So it's then pulling 570 watts for uh, for heat pump so that uh, makes sense kind of hmm. okay but i will also take a slightly different route this time to uh yeah 
maybe it's also, it won't be too boring for you guys. And maybe, I don't know, I kind of skipped the Big and Hogue uh, speed bumps today. We'll see if I bother going there. But I'll take at least ring three over here. So, yes, um, you guys probably don't know, how is this car done? Well, for, first of all, you saw the outside. It looks gorgeous. I like it. I like the looks. It has this kind of masculine, badass look. And it's still the MB cars, of course, but I feel like it just looks better than the ID, ID4, ID5. Yeah, this one is the equivalent to the, the Volkswagen ID5. But for you guys who know, uh, many, I guess many people complain about the ID5 looks or not, yeah, the looks inside the interior. This one is better. I feel like it's better. Uh, it feels more premium than the ID4. Uh, we have some, at least some soft, soft materials here and also some, some kind, of, kind of fake carbon fiber there uh, and we have physical buttons on the steering wheel id4 oh sorry id4 id5 id3 also they have that haptic feedback which i don't like at all and what else is it um well it still doesn't have 12 out in the front but it has 12 out in the back at least but then okay the id4 has that captain's chairs but then this one has just a center here uh, and, but at least you can adjust it up a little bit and down. So I just have it a little bit up like this. Uh, and also you can hear now, maybe this should be a standard in the test, which is to drive through this tunnel. Because you can hear that despite being in a tunnel, it's still fairly quiet here. I can almost whisper and you can hear me. Huh? Isn't that great, huh? Very impressive. And yes, it has double glazed window here. And I'm not sure, maybe some acoustic glass in the front and then I, I don't know, man. Maybe also some uh, acoustic stuff and on the on the roof, but it's very nice and comfortable. I measure it to be quiet, uh, and also measure that um, the acceleration actually better than spec. It's supposed to be uh, zero to hundred in six point five seconds, but I measured a little over six seconds only. So, so it's well, okay. It's a uh, it's a Skoda RS. So you suppose you expect the RS power, right? Well, I don't know, zero to 100 in six seconds is not uh, neck snapping fast uh, for an EV today. Uh, then you want to have something like Tesla, uh, which does it in less than four seconds. But I guess v versus fossil cars, then it's considered fast. So, um, but I think people who buy this car, they are not looking for power or speed, or they're not gonna go tracking with it. But I also measured just like the ID5, uh, okay, for you guys who don't know, the ID4 is the boxy version, the ID5 is the coupe version, and this one for Skoda is just called Skoda or Enyaq, right? And then this one is the Enyaq coupe, which is the similar to the ID5. And um, space wise, the ID, uh, the, the, the Enyaq coupe here can take one banana box less than uh, the, the boxy Enyaq or the fat Enyaq. So that's pretty good uh, compromise because you're then losing a little bit of space, but you get better aerodynamics because the, the fat uh, Enyaq has a drag coefficient of 0.23, no wait, no, sorry, my bad, 0.257. But this one has 0.234. So it's a lot better. And then you sacrifice a little bit on the, on the, on the, on the space. So, when do you utilize all the space? Well, once per year, maybe. When do you utilize better uh, consumption, better efficiency? Every day. Yes, right now we're driving here. In the wet, we will then get better efficiency because the car is more aerodynamic. And also versus the ID4. Uh, I will compare a lot against ID4, ID5 because they are kind of brothers from another mothers and they are very similar in many ways. Uh, then. The, the ID4, ID5 has pretty poor aerodynamics. If I remember correctly, the ID4 has 0.29 and then the ID5 has 0.27. So even the ID5, the coupe, the more aerodynamic one, has higher drag coefficient than the, the fat, um, the fat, wait, there's so much fat stuff here. Uh, fat uh, Enyaq, huh? Think about that, huh? Isn't that crazy? So, and for me, I'm not gonna lie, I like efficient cars. Just like the Tesla Model S in front of us. I like efficient cars. That's the way they should build cars 
as of today. Maybe in uh, two to five years when the batteries are better, faster, charges faster, bigger, then we don't care too much about the efficiency. But as of today, efficiency still matters. And by use, uh, having good efficiency, you can then squeeze out more of the battery and you don't have to go crazy high on the charging speed and all that. But um, also, when you think about, okay, how is the ride, by the way? So, uh, yeah, let me do a little bit of flip mode here. Let me see, can I, I have to be careful so I don't slide in there. Yeah, you see, it's a, it's a quick car uh, to accelerate. It's, uh, it's nimble, at least. It's not neck snapping fast, but it's still quick. Uh, probably faster than many fossil cars on the roads. Anyway, there was a Porsche. We have a Porsche behind us now. Uh, I just accelerated in front of him. Poof! Yeah, no problem. But uh, the ride is nice and, and, and comfy. So, you know, when you try to toss around corners, you feel like it's wagging a bit. So it's, it's not a sports car. It's more like a comfortable uh, cr cruising, car, comfortable family car. Yes, actually. So uh, compared to the Model Y, even the Model Y from Giga Berlin with softer suspension, this one even feels more comfortable, but then, of course, softer and not as sporty as Model Y. But I gotta say, man, even with 21 inch wheels, it's comfortable and it's quiet. And I guess you can even go for, uh, I'm not sure which one you can get, 20, 20, yeah, 20 inch, I saw in the configurator. You can even get a 20 inch, maybe 19 if you want even more comfort and even better noise. But even the 21 that I try now uh, is still very good. I even did that OnlyFans run, the Eco run through Norway with mostly AC off. And you know, in that Eco run, I managed to average 128 watt hour per kilometer. That is insanely good. That is only three watt hour per kilometer higher than Model Y. But then the Model Y was equipped with 18 inch skinny tires. So this shows you that despite having 21 inch wheels on this car, it is really, really efficient. And this also proves that, well, actually I have, I have to do a control test, but uh, my claim is that even if you go for the overdrive in the MEB platform like this one, you don't sacrifice uh, efficiency. You, it seems like you have to sacrifice efficiency if you go for all-wheel drive version, for example, Volvo Polestar. And in, uh, I think it was the Mercedes. Yeah, I'm not sure about the other cars. I don't remember, but uh, when I tested Tesla or uh, yeah, the, the Korean cars, the eGMP, and also this platform, the, uh, the MEB platform, then uh, at least according to my test, you don't lose efficiency if you go for all-wheel drive. And that's very nice because some people want that all-wheel drive, especially Norwegians. But then if you want the Volvo or Polestar, uh, you kind of have to expect 10% uh, higher consumption maybe with the all-wheel drive version. But with this one, no compromise, you know? Um, but let's see, maybe I should try to toss it around some corners where it's dry. Yeah, yeah let, let's do that. Um, so let's go over here. I, I need to test some driving dynamics. And I can show you, by the way, uh, oh yeah, I should have tried in a the tunnel there, but I can show you here is that we have it in D mode now. If I switch it to D mode, which people say, oh, you have to do D mode. Uh, D mode, you have some pedal shifters here. And now I can recruise, uh, I can increase recuperation level. Now we have recoup recoup level three. And you see over here that we have the strongest region. Uh, let me just try to go schnell. Yeah, you see, when you, when you floor it, you don't spin the wheels. So I guess the car is set up to be kind of gentle. This is also what I me measured before uh, with other MEB cars is that, but well, maybe I have to go in a sport mode. Let me see, mode, sport. Okay, how about now? Is it better? Is it better? Let me just, uh, we have to go, we have to go around here. Let's go in the roundabout and then see if we can uh, provoke some uh, skidding or something. Uh, but I feel like, I don't remember which car was a try recently. Oh, yeah, the, the BMW i4. The BMW i4 is set up similar to Tesla, where uh, when you toss it around corners and you floor it, it will allow a little bit of skidding. Uh, so you get that sporty feel. But here I feel like, wait, wait, it's doing something here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Yeah, okay, okay, so it allows a little bit of slip. That's cool, that's cool. So well, it was a little bit wet outside here, but ah, uh, yeah, you see? So you can have a little bit of fun here, but it's still a heavy car. But 
yeah, so I'm, I'm not gonna go too crazy on public roads, but just showing you that, I guess if you put the car in sport mode, you can have a little bit of fun. I'm gonna try a little bit more here. Let's go, let's go exit here. Okay, bum, 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 bum. here. And then I guess we can just go, uh, yeah, yeah, I can show you also, the turning circle is uh, fairly good on this car, despite being uh, a large family car. Can I do uh, 180 degrees here? Okay, let's try. Have a little bit of space there. Full turn. Ooh, I'm a bit close to that there. Okay, maybe it didn't go full there, but fairly close. Uh, I feel like it's still easy to maneuver this car. All right. Let's see now. If I just... Yeah, 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 okay, okay. But I feel like the sportiness here is not on the same level as maybe Tesla or BMW. But just, just to give you guys an idea. Well, since you're already here, maybe we can just go to the... Um, wait, wait. Regent, region. Yeah, to the big and heavy uh, speed bumps. You can test it anyway. Yes. Try the different routes so you guys don't get bored. But let's see now. So when it comes to the region, this car has blending brakes. And you can show you that you can kind of coast if you have it in D, in the lowest uh, setting in the D. But let me show you. I guess you can demonstrate by going over here. We have a little bit less traffic here. So if I set it to the lowest level, where is it? We have three, two, one. And then it's kind of like off, but you don't see it. It's, there are actually four levels. And then here you see that when I just accelerate, you see here that it's just one kilo is pulling one kilo it is kind of rolling but it's actually not the same as putting it in neutral so it still regenerates a little bit but i'm going to show you we have to go somewhere else where we have a little bit of downhill i can demonstrate that but now i'm just going to use this one okay d mode and then try the big and heavy speed bumps they are quite hard I don't know if you guys care about the speed bump test here. Is it important or should I skip it? Yeah, you see, ooh, it, it just floats over it. Some cars like Tesla would just, uh, uh, you know, but this one, you still have your spine intact after going over there. And then I can show you this other, okay, here, here is a perfect example. Full turn, and we should be able to do it now. Good turning circle, oh, nice, cor new, new corners. Then the face, the, ooh, Ionic 5. Ooh, give me that thing, okay. All right, let's try this at an angle then. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. You see, it goes like flyways like that. Okay, I'll try again here. Yeah, yeah I, as expected, it goes a little bit like this. So, uh, and then I guess we can try some more driving dynamics if you guys care about it, which is over here. But it's slippery today, so I have, have to be a little bit careful. Uh, let me see if we go a little bit faster. We have to check here. Let's wait until it's straight at least. Uh, and it's getting late now. Yeah, it's Sunday uh, and 10 in the evening. Okay, no one here, no one here, no police eye, no pedestrians. Yeah, you see, it, it kind of, it, it, but it, I mean, will you do good in the in this moose test? Yeah, I think it will still pass the moose test. Oh, okay, I, I saw that, I felt like the, the TC was working a little bit there. Yeah, so you see, it, it's not that sporty, but I think in a, in a critical maneuver, it will still be able to, to avoid any potential danger. But uh, let's go over here and I can test, I can show you guys the region. So when you have it in B mode, it, it will then default to quite strong regions. So if I go a little bit fast now and the region, see that we region, okay, the numbers are up a little bit slow, 34 kilowatt. Yeah, 34 was at least the highest I managed to uh, reach uh, in this kind of, road here yeah 34 kilowatt i think it'll be higher when we have higher speed uh, but uh, we don't have that one pedal driving here but i can show you once we go over there wait which mode am i in right now uh, am i still in uh, sport mode yeah okay i can go into normal mode it doesn't matter really uh, normal mode is still fast and also i can show you by the way that uh, sorry in normal mode you have 250 kilowatt was it we saw briefly 250 kilowatt there and uh, we can just try again over here let's see okay let's see how many kilowatt we can get 
Well, that was okay. 258. Oh, nice. Okay, 258. All right. Let's try a little bit more over here. Okay. 230 something. 257. Yeah, okay. So we keep getting 250 something. And if we go into sport mode, we should still get 250. 251. Okay, let me see. Slow down a bit here. The numbers update a bit slow. That's the thing. 240, 250, yeah, you see? So you, you achieve the same power whether you are in normal or sport mode. And I also feel like the, the throttle response is not that much different. You can get, a, I'll give you an impression now. This is normal mode. So there's a slight delay when you floor it. See, there's like a second when you react, and in sport mode, there's slightly shorter uh, lag the legacy automaker lag. <laughs> what about the eco mode then? What, okay, wait, wait. eco mode you should have less power, right? Or do we? Oh, it's still 258. It's still the same power. So, but that's good, I guess, because you can then be in eco mode and you would just have a different tune throttle and you can then uh, achieve the maximum power if you request for it. Whereas I think it's kind of, I don't like those modes where where you are in some kind of eco mode and the maximum power is limited uh, because in case you need it you kind of want to need it without having to go to the screen or put, push the button to uh, but then the eco mode will maybe try to uh, min, uh, maxim or limit the maximum power you can use for HVAC or yeah, HVAC means heat ventilation AC or um, v heat ventilation air conditioning um, but then uh, eco mode might change the throttle response so it's more gentle maybe or a smoother uh, power uh, curve so you don't have to uh, introduce too much uh, heat into the system yeah something like that but okay so i'm just gonna cruise a little bit more now so now you guys have seen a little bit how it works and then the, this one is equipped with the id software uh, 3.0.0 and uh, it's good but however i have some complaints when you navigate to um oh the lag okay i forgot you go to destinations for example, if I go, wait, last destinations. I've been some place, whoa, the lag, holy shit. For example, if I go to uh, Leira, this is kind of far away, right? Okay, start. All right, um, well, I think I have to go home. Uh, well, well, yeah, you see, there's, there's some, you see that you will arrive with roughly half battery, but it doesn't tell you how many percent you will arrive with. If you click there and wait for the lag, and then you see the, the battery icon slightly better here because it's black background. And you click here, then you see that you arrive at 51%. So why can't we see 51% or, or other places, right? But the thing is that that 51%, you can't really trust it because once you arrive there, you might arrive with only 40% uh, or I guess it depends how hard you hammer it, but it doesn't seem to take in account. It doesn't learn that you hammer it, whereas Tesla and BMW and Mercedes will learn how fast or slow you drive and then adjust the estimation there better. So at least there, Volkswagen has a little job to do to make uh, the car better at predicting, but at least it offers that one. And as long as you drive with a hat, you will actually get there with 51%. So that's good because many cars I test nowadays, they don't have that feature even so you are, you have no idea whether you will reach that point or not um one other thing i love about this car is that it has a stock here for adaptive cruise control and but it's a little bit unlogic how you change speed uh, you have to if you want to increase or decrease by one kilometer per hour you have to uh, press a button to decrease and then you have to push it against you to increase so it's a bit weird logic whereas for example Mercedes and Tesla it's more intuitive that you 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 push up and down and then uh, how was it again yeah you press hard up to go 10 and then you press no or five and then you press gentle up to get one only so it's way more intuitive but at least it's better than the ID family cars because those ID cars they have uh, they have the haptic f buttons uh, I just I hate those buttons because I by accident by accident rub into them or when I try to do stuff like there to change uh, speed it's clumsier 
because it's haptic feedback and there was uh, also a way you can increase by one uh, versus increase by 10 then I think you have to press harder to increase by 10 and then gently press to increase by one but sometimes you accidentally enable uh, changing of distance instead and then once you are in the changing of distance mode then you can't increase or decrease the speed uh, something like that I don't remember how it was but I didn't like the haptic feedback so what I'm saying is that I like the way this car has been set up hardware wise with the buttons with the uh, yeah with lots of stuff and also I feel like this is a more practical car than the ID family uh, the whole interior it has like lots of pockets it has this stuff here it has pockets here it has the, the bridge here and you have the wireless charging pad here in the front similar to where Tesla has it oh are you about to are you about to crash into me freaking dude okay let's hammer it okay it doesn't give you a headache or anything like that so Okay, let me just set there. Uh, it has the umbrella holder over here. That's the Skoda feature. It also has uh, this, these uh, tiny walls in the trunk with Velcro. So you can place them uh, in different positions. And it was super useful because a couple of days ago, uh, wait, wait, it was time flies. It was yesterday. Yesterday, I picked up a cake for uh, um, Maya's birthday wifey ordered the cake and I pick up and I, I had a choice between this car or the Model Y performance I chose this car because it has slightly softer suspension and it has that, that those those velcro things so I then put the cake in the trunk and then I pushed the thing in the trunk and the cake stayed there stayed put there I didn't hammer hard of course but it didn't slide anywhere <laughs> so that was super practical and also today I went on a uh, uh, dinner with uh, wifey and Maya and uh, Isabel and I put Isabel roughly yeah, on, on the back there, in the back seat there. It worked great and uh, the, um, the stroller, baby stroller, e e e Cybex e Priam could fit in the trunk but I had to take out the foam and the stuff in the foam and then I could fit everything. Wait, maybe I should go over here instead, change my mind, let's go over here, let's go via, via IKEA. And it fit just great. Uh, I still feel like maybe the space in the Model Y is better. It should be because uh, the Model Y can take more banana boxes. But this car still passed the family car test with you know, lots of people in the car. But we didn't bring any luggage because we were just going for a, a family dinner. But I didn't bother making a, a baby stroller test for this car because those videos in general, they get low view counts. And this car is kind of similar to the Model uh, the, the, the the ID5 anyway so um, yeah but um, okay uh, what else should I say yeah I should mention okay well I did mention it that uh, <laughs> this car is very efficient but also during 1000 kilometer challenge it was also really efficient it was the efficiency was pretty much on par with Tesla that's how good this efficiency is also when I did range test really impressive because um, the, the MED platform, my impression after testing so many MED cars, I tested the ID3, ID4, uh, the Cupra Born, uh, various variants. I have the rear wheel drive ID4, the, the all wheel drive, the GTX, you know, ID5. I tried so many MED cars. And what I've been seeing over and over again is that the MED platform seems like Volkswagen did a great job of making it efficient. The drivetrain itself, the gearbox, and the way they set up the all-wheel drive system so that uh, they decouple one motor uh, when... Uh, I don't have that information, but I'm just assuming that when you're just cruising like this, then it only uses one motor. I'm not sure if it's a front or the back. And that's the way it saves energy. Um, but also, uh, I feel like uh, uh, it's not only about the, the whole drivetrain efficiency, but this car has the drag also efficiency, where, whereas uh, the ID4 seems to uh, id4 id5 seems to struggle a bit so uh, a little bit bummer because i also like the id4 id5 but um the the lack of efficiency kind of ruins it a little bit oh uh, it has a navigation stuff active now let me uh, wait, wait how to uh, how the home uh, i can do this i can do this and then i can well uh, i think i'm going the clumsy way i, I can just cancel it. No, 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 i stopped the navigation so but one thing i noticed <laughs> during the 1000 km challenge is that um, this car rapid gates but just slightly so um, um, 
I, I look at uh, stuff over here and this number here after I mean I can tell you quickly what happened it was 25 to 30 degrees outside and um, when you hammer it uh, the battery here the battery temperature here goes to around 30 degrees Celsius and the car uh, kind of keeps it there it, it could cool it down more but it just kept it at 30 degrees because that was good because when I arrived with 5% or less than 5% I would get boom 175 kilowatt yeah this car by the way can peak at 175 kilowatt until roughly 20% and then it throttles to around 150 kilowatt so this one has like a, a more aggressive curve if you go for the other version uh, I'm not sure which one that is maybe the yeah coupe without the RS which is the rear wheel drive version just like the ID5 Pro which is the rear wheel drive then you get a different battery that peaks at only 135 kilowatt but then it has a flatter curve but I prefer this this kind of peak curve because then I can choose to charge to only 45 percent like when I hammer it during a 1000 kilometer challenge for the most time I needed to charge you only 35 to 45 percent maybe and then sometimes I stretch it to like 50 55 percent but that's crazy right that you only charge to less than 60 percent but that's because this car is so efficient so even charging to only 60 percent you can still drive quite far <laughs> um, but of course if you have a more like a normal driving charging uh, ha habit or scenario with a family with kids or dog then you might want to go for let's say 90 percent and then you can drive really far on a single charge uh, but but okay the whole thing with it overheating yeah you guys are do 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 come on tell, tell me tell me yeah um so what happens is that it goes pretty fast when you start charging it but then the temperatures here and here they rise to 50 degrees Celsius and this battery doesn't like to go much beyond 50 degrees so at a roughly 50 51 degrees Celsius it has to start throttling down the thing no. uh, but when I did the charging test it wasn't 25 to, or 30 degrees Celsius outside in the ambient temperature and then I was getting a better charging curve <laughs> so I thought oh that's how it works and also when I did the ID5 1000 kilometer challenge I just happened to do it at night because uh, but because of the circumstances I had to do it at night and then uh, I realized afterwards that when you do it when it's 25 degrees Celsius outside the battery will rapid gate but only slightly yeah you, you um, it will still go ultra schnell uh up until roughly 35 percent or, or yeah oh no no actually i think you get full speed roughly to 40 percent then it starts throttling but then you already pushed a big chunk of the energy you want to push in and then it throttles a little bit but then i found out by the end of the day that if you charge to 60 percent or i don't know 90 percent uh, the rapid gate session is only one minute slower than the non rapid gate session and those sessions are roughly half an hour to 40 minutes you only lose one minute that's it so it's not okay technically yes it's rapid gating it's overheating but it's so little yeah it's so little it's not like leaf when freaking leaf overheats uh, instead of getting 75 72 kilowatt which is uh, the actually no it's 100 but practically 72 kilowatt in the leaf 62 kilowatt hour you will be getting only 22 when it's really bad so in a way yes uh, this car rapid gates but it's not that bad but there's the different scenario where um, during the 1000 kilometer challenge I also by on purpose switch off HVAC because I noticed that when you have HVAC on and you start charging and the cooling kicks in this one it actually goes to 10 kilowatt uh, when you come back to the car open the door this one will drop to zero and then the battery inlet uh, which is you know it's trying to cool down the battery let's say the battery is at uh, almost 50 degrees and then the inlet is at uh, 15 degrees so it's cooling down the battery suddenly the inlet goes up boom to 45 degrees it's like the cooling temporarily stops and that also affects the charging but just gently but then it's starting again but then the cooling uh, is then also diverted to the cabin so then you get slightly worse cooling to the battery uh, which I don't agree with I think they should uh, design the system so that they prioritize the battery but even if you do that and you, if, even if it's 25 degrees Celsius inside the, uh, outside and you run the HVAC when you're charging you're not losing that much charging speed you might be losing yet another minute or so so you might be two minutes slower but it's still no big deal 
but of course it's not optimal uh, for people who care about this they're like ah oh, that's not ideal yeah it's not ideal but uh, practically you are not that much affected by it and I think most people won't even notice that's probably why nobody's talking about this because they don't notice it I also when I tested the ID3 ID4 or whatever I tested several years ago I back then I didn't have car scanner working so I didn't know what's going on but it did happen there I best bet but I didn't know you see but it's no big deal because I didn't feel like the charging was that much slower than usual so yeah just had to mention it since i found it it's like a discovery so but yeah uh this video is getting pretty long but um you guys see where it's going because i like this a lot and uh, i like id4 id5 a lot but i just love the the skoda even more like <laughs> after driving this after seeing the efficiency uh there's, there's just to me it to me i don't know about you guys but can you guys please tell me what is better with the ID5 versus the Skoda Enyaq RS uh, Coupe here? To me, uh, I, I don't know, man. It seems like Enyaq is better than ID5 in every aspect. Efficiency, looks, practicality inside here. Uh, okay, the one thing I don't like, I forgot to mention, it also applies to the regular Enyaq. The instrument cluster here, this is a tiny screen. In the in the ID5, ID4, ID3, they have it here in the steering rod column thing here, and it moves with the steering wheel when you go up and down. Here it's it's in the instrument cluster, but for some reason they made it freaking tiny Asian size. So it could they could do it, they could make it at least 20% larger. So that's like that's a bit weird because this is a big screen, nice big screen. This is tiny. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> It just looks weird, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, and then of course, practically no big deal because they, I guess they know that it's small, so they don't push too much information in the screen. But if they made it larger, for example, uh, the Q4, I don't remember. I think, yeah, I think the Q4, which also I may be uh, based on the Audi Q4, e-tron. I think they had a bigger screen, but it was also traditionally here. So Skoda could have done it too. Uh, I don't think uh, MEB platform requires you to use a tiny screen in the instrument cluster. But that's pretty much it when it comes to the downside of this car. I, I really can't find any downside. Okay, there's one downside maybe. I heard it. I'm not sure. You guys maybe need to confirm this or check it with your own country. But I heard that if you order Skoda Enyaq today, you will get it in 18 months. I'm like, huh? In 18 months, we will have flying cars. In 18 months, Tesla will have fat cells out. We will have uh, uh, hydrogen cars uh, will be dominating the market. In 18 months, we will have solid state batteries. Sony will be top one EV producer in the world. You know, who knows what's going to happen in 18 months? 18 months is a little bit too long, but it should be maybe six months wait time, not 18 months. Yeah, maybe that is the biggest problem with this car when I think about it. Because no matter how good this car is, as long as you, you cannot get it within three to six months, then what is the point, right? Yeah, that, that's true, that's true. I should have brought this up earlier. I guess it's pointless now. You watch the video for no reason because um, you can't get this in time. Or maybe you can buy a second hand. You can buy from a reseller, but you might have to pay a higher price. Oh, they could, oh yeah, yeah, man. I think that's what I need to do. I need to, I need to buy some of these cars uh, and then resell them. But then I, I think maybe the importers, they don't like it. So uh, yeah, that's the thing. But uh, yeah, so, um, and then as for the headlights, by the way, I look at it, they said some kind of Skoda headlights on it. But when I look at it, I tried it in the dark. It looks and feels and functions just like the ID3, ID4 headlights. So I suspect that they have the same headlights. So yes, the MEB platform is based on, I guess, drivetrain, but I guess they could also take other hardware because I feel like, yeah, like the side mirrors here and everything here, the, the, the blind spot, the stuff here looks just like in the ID4. So there's probably some kind of hardware suite they, they use and they can reuse them depending on which car. But then I saw that, for example, uh, Audi Q4 e-tron they don't use this OS here for example uh, but this one by the way looks and also looks and feels very similar to Volkswagen's ID software whereas Audi they use their own Audi hardware uh, so software uh, but uh, I like also this one 
better than the ID software because when you press and hold here, you have more customizations. You can delete some stuff. You can add. Uh, you can add, you have you have like a grid here where you can uh, so you can remove stuff and you can add items here and you have vehicle in one one uh, times one or you have vehicle in two times two or you have vehicles in two times three. So you can customize how big you want each widget. And the best part is that you can actually do this. Wait, let me see. No, no, no. You can do this, hold and, and go enter the edit mode while you're driving. <laughs> Volkswagen uh, won't allow you to do that. But then there's one stupid feature that I don't like is that when you go here, I guess this is just a safety thing. Okay. If you go here, and I'm, I'm going to drive, I'm going to do this on purpose now. You see, so even though I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the road, right? Okay. Let me, let me just demonstrate here. Typical scenario. You be, you'll be in no man's land. There is nothing there. I'm looking at the road, and then I'm like, okay, I want to see eight sport. Nebenes. We're going to go to Nebenes. Then it's like, please pay attention to the road. I'm paying attention to the road. I'm looking at the road, but then I just take a quick blink here I can kind of see it on the edge of my uh, my sight here and I'm just scrolling over to Minnesota I know I'm gonna go to Minnesota here and then it's like oh it forces you to look at the road and then you have to wait and it seems to be more and more often and I try to buckle up here uh, and it doesn't seem to help yeah uh, because I try what, what if the driver what if the passenger is browsing here uh, well it didn't help so um Trying to hack, so that's kind of silly. Let me see. I need to uh, turn around somewhere. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go home now. I think I'm done talking, but uh, I try to give you guys as much information as possible about this car. Uh, ooh, let me just uh, go here. Okay, let me just go like this, and then zoop, and then let me see. Can I do a full turn now? Yes, I can because I'm a tie can. Look at that. <clears throat> Let me, let me do a little launcher. But the launcher is kind of slow. Okay. Mode. Sport. Okay. Okay. Well, that wasn't... Uh, uh, okay. It's not a sports car. It's a, it's, a, it's a fairly quick family car. Yeah, that's right. So, um, what is the consumption, by the way? I've been driving around here. Let me see, you go to home. Okay, 182 watt hour per kilometer. That's kind of high, but we have wet roads and been hammering it. Yeah, uh, I don't know, maybe I was also stationary. Yeah, I was stationary for eight minutes before I started it. So the, the, the HVAC was running, so you have extra consumption because of that. So maybe the consumption should have been more like 160 watt hour per kilometer which is actually pretty good or even 170 watt hour per kilometer would be pretty good for this kind of sized car so um uh, overall i like this car you know um I, I checked the configurator in norway it costs around 600k nook which is uh, about the same as a model y before uh, model y long range um so of course it's not the cheap car but uh, pe for people looking for a, a nice uh, electric family car, go for it, man. You know, it's efficient, it's quiet, it's comfortable, it's dead sexy. Get this color, this color costs extra, by the way. Just get it, get it, get it. The illuminated grill, it's pointless, but that's the whole point, that it's pointless. <laughs> I like this car, man. <laughs> but you see, in the past, I've been liking lots of cars, and that is good that I, me as a reviewer, like the cars because it means that those are good cars coming out from from Mercedes from BMW from Tesla you know good cars not every car I test in the past have been that great so um, I can just uh, give you guys two thumbs up yeah for this car it's nice I'm just gonna end it now uh, wait Texas Burger yeah there's some Volvo there I, I usually park right in front of the Texas Burger but I'll just park a little bit next to it there so uh, let me just park here. Yeah, you wanna you wanna park with me? Huh? You wanna park? Oh yeah. Forkes kebab. That's what it is. Texas burger is out already. There. Put the car in park. Well, yeah. I forgot to show you guys the region. Yeah, I'm gonna just. Uh, okay, okay. So, if I have it in 
D, right? Then you see you have you have you go downhill, but there is still some region going on here. Yeah, but then when you have it in neutral, wait, how? Damn, there are so many trucks here. I, I don't like it in there. It's freaking shabby. But when you have it in neutral, you will then have no region. Yeah, so I guess if you want to be a ninja, you have to then go to neutral when you go downhill. That's what I did a couple of times during the OnlyFans run. But um, uh, for the most part, uh, this car is so efficient anyway. And I guess even if you're just coasting a little bit with a D, D with a zero region on the D, it's still good enough. So um, yeah, this car is just awesome, man. It, wait, wait, the MAB, huh? The ID4, did the ID4 have the pedal shifter, sir? I don't remember. I don't think so. Did it? Yeah. So, that's it, huh? What do you guys think, huh? Is this a car you would like to buy? It costs half of EQE, for example. Uh, it, it costs less than uh, than the, the wait, wait a second. If compared to the BMW i4 rear wheel drive, this is even all wheel drive, right? Huh? So, um, but again, it's different cars, yeah. So, but I guess if you want a family car, then you can choose between this one or the Model Y or uh, maybe Ionic 5 or EV6. Now, this one is bigger than the EV6. Yeah, it's quite spacious in there. It's like a spaceship. But okay, there's one la last complaint I have, by the way. I guess you guys, there must be something I don't like about this car. Yes, which is this one here. I don't know what the heck it is. It's some kind of reflective surface, but I think that the reflective shield. This one is supposed to block you from uh, seeing the, the head-up display, which it does. But when you're driving at night in tunnels or at night and you have street, uh, street lights above you, uh, the street lights reflect and reflect here and then you get this kind of like reflective thing moving there over there so this thing should have been matte i don't know why they put glossy surfaces in uh, cars nowadays everything in the car should be matte even stuff in the steering wheel here should be matte not glossy <laughs> that's just me nitpicking picking about things but you know no car is perfect so uh, i guess you can just wrap you just wrap that shit. you just wrap it with carbon fiber or something, then problem solved. <laughs> I also seen people like I saw just yes, you know, today there was a guy posting on the Polestar group. Polestar has one cup holder here. This one has two cup holders, by the way. Uh, Polestar has one cup holder, and then he made a modification to the center console, so he added an extra cup holder there. So, okay, that's what people are gonna do. If the car is not perfect, they will just make some small modification to make the car more perfect for them. And that's also what you can do with this car. But okay, so this is a way too long video. I gave you guys as much information as possible with this car, but I love it. It's awesome. So I think that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.